What's up guys, it's your old pal, Nadia and Sans here for another very exciting episode of Learn How to Edit Stuff. Now, a lot of you have asked me questions about frame rate and FPS and shooting slow motion and the difference between 60 FPS and 23976. What is 23976? We're gonna answer all of those questions today. We're gonna talk about slow motion best practices. We're also gonna talk about FPS best practices. We're gonna be working in Adobe Premiere, but we're gonna start off talking about slow motion shooting first because that's right, shooting comes before editing. Now, I don't know what kind of camera you guys have out there. It could be really fancy, it could be not so fancy. My camera is a Sony RX100 Mark V. It's a little vlogging camera, I love it. It can shoot 24, 30, 60, 120, 240, 480, 960 frames a second in this tiny little camera. How is that even, how, what? I'm assuming not all of your cameras go up to 960 frames a second, that's totally fine. We're gonna be primarily looking at 60 FPS and 120 FPS in relation to slow-mo because I'm assuming that's what most cameras out there shoot these days. Depending on what type of camera you have, this info may or may not be useful to you. My camera has an HFR mode, which is high frame rate, and you can actually set it to program auto to auto adjust all the functions, the f-stop, the shutter speed, the ISO, all automatically based on the frame rate that you're shooting. If you don't have an automatic feature or high frame rate mode in your camera, but you can still shoot 60 or 120 FPS, the most important thing for you to remember is that your shutter speed has to be at least double your frame rate or else the slow-mo is gonna look really laggy and really like jittery and you're not gonna get buttery smooth slow motion like you want. So shutter speed has to be double your FPS. That's the rule, I don't know, I heard it a long time ago. A lot of people have told me that and I trust all those people, so here we are. All right, go out there and shoot some slow-mo. Then we're gonna bring it into Premiere. I'm gonna show you guys two ways to slow it down. And then we're gonna talk about FPS, sequence settings, all that fun stuff that you guys have been asking me about forever. Open up Adobe Premiere, because we're getting started. Boys and girls, welcome. I've got some shots of water with a coin falling in it in super slow-mo that I'd like to share with you. 240 frames per second. 480 frames per second. Wow, gorgeous and 960 frames per second. Absolutely magnificent. Look at how long the water is taking to fall down to the table. Splash. Like I said, your camera may not shoot that high of a frame rate, but I thought it was cool. Uh, personally, the 960 frames a second video kind of looks like garbage. Uh, the 480 and 240 look pretty good. 240 looks better than 480, but uh, you know, I'm not gonna complain. I have high frame rate. It's pretty cool, I guess. But just for you guys, I also shot the same thing in 60 frames a second and 120 frames a second. If you come over here to your footage and if you've shot anything in a high frame rate, it will actually tell you what the frame rate is from this frame rate dropdown. If you don't have this, you can right click up here and go to metadata display and you can type in frame rate here and make sure that it is checked so you can see your frame rates. Now, what I recommend doing is if you're shooting a lot of stuff, we only have two clips here, I understand, but if you're shooting a lot of stuff, Everything that's in 60 FPS, I would go and label it with a color by right clicking on the colored square to the left and then coming up to label and changing the label color. So let's say we wanna make tan all of our 60 FPS and we wanna make mango our 120 FPS. Now, if I ever have that footage and I drag it onto my timeline, I see that it's tan or I see that it's mango and that color differential is kind of letting me know which frame rate I'm working with at the time. Kind of a little pro tip, it helps me. Hopefully it'll help you. Yeah, who knows? Let's start by slowing down a clip. We're gonna use our 120 FPS clip and I'm just gonna play it and it's super fast, right? Like that's insane. How are you ever gonna, well, that's why I shot it in 120 FPS. Check this out. Drag it down to my timeline. I have a macro key set for my speed, but if you guys don't have a keyboard shortcut set, uh, you can right click on it and go to speed duration. It's the same thing. And I'm gonna turn down this clip 20%. So as you see, the, the duration changes from 1.14 seconds to 7.22 seconds. So now that clip is gonna be seven seconds long and down here on my timeline, it ends up being that long. And now when I play it, <laughs> the sound, but there you go. I'm gonna delete the sound here, but we slowed down that uh, 120 FPS clip. But the general rule of thumb for slowing down any footage goes something like this. 23,976 or 24 or 30 frames a second footage, you're not gonna to wanna to slow down. It just doesn't look good. Your frames will look laggy. It's gonna look kind of like sh 
If you have 60 FPS footage, you can slow it down to 50% speed, so you can get half out of that. And then 120 FPS, you can slow it down to 20% speed, and it will still look good. It won't get degraded. It'll still be fluid slow motion. Now, the other way you can do it is interpreting the footage to match the sequence settings that you're currently working with. So right now, if I come up to sequence, sequence settings, I'm working at 1920 by 1080 at 23976 timecode. This is my timeline settings, my sequence settings. So if I click OK and I come over here to my 120 FPS clip and delete it out of the timeline first, I'm going to right click on it, come up to modify and then go to interpret footage. And then it will open up this dialogue here and it'll tell me use the frame rate that I shot in or assume this frame rate. So if I click on that and I type in 23976, it will actually automatically conform that clip to my sequence settings. And now when I play this, it's already going to be in slow motion and I can bring it down and it preserves our color and everything like that, which is great. Now, which one's better? I don't know. It's totally up to you. If you do it the first way where you slow it down manually, you kind of have more control and you can go like 30% or 40% or 20%. You can kind of mess around with that yourself to see what works. But if you conform it to the timeline, you'll just get what you get and then you'll have to actually speed it up if you want it to go a little bit faster than slow-mo. It's a little confusing. Uh, you can try it either way. I personally like slowing it down manually because I like having a little bit more control, but you guys are gonna do you, you know, use the knowledge that you learned in today's video to do your own cool thing and don't just copy me, you know, kind of the mantra of the channel. Let's move on. I'm gonna open up my sequence settings again you, so you guys can see kind of what I'm working with here. Uh, editing mode custom, time-based 23976 frames per second, 1920 by 1080, square pixel aspect ratio, no fields progressive scan, and display format 23976 timecode, sample rate 4800, and that's about it. Take a screenshot of this, pause the video, write it all down. This is what I use for pretty much every video I do. Every video on this channel, Almost every single video that I do at work is this exact thing, except the frame size changes. This one's at 1080 when I do stuff at work, or if I do a 4K video on my channel, it ends up being 4K, but everything else outside of that is the exact same. I personally like 24 frames a second. I like the way it looks. I like that it's a tad bit more cinematic because you're actually losing frames. The 30 FPS version, it's a little bit more fluid. The 60 FPS version actually looks like you, it's a fake video, it doesn't look real. I like 24 FPS because it looks a little bit more cinematic. It gives a little bit more motion blur that actually looks more more realistic. That was a goofy move to do. But that's just my preference. I have my preference. You guys may have your preference. One of your friends may tell you something different, but every video I do, I do it at these exact settings, except for switching out frame size from 1920 to 1080 to 3840 by 2160 if I'm doing anything in 4K or UHD. Now, the one thing to note is you have to know what you're going for at the end. If you're doing a video for YouTube, for example, I'm okay with putting this out at 24 frames a second, but if you guys have a client that's like, hey, can you deliver in 60 FPS? If you have a video that's gonna go on Twitch, it's gonna be intermingled with a lot of like gaming stuff, which is traditionally broadcast at 60 FPS. You have to know where your video is going in order to make the determination of what your sequence setting should be as far as FPS is concerned. Generally, I'm gonna tell you to never shoot 60 FPS in a video because it looks really strange, but it's okay for gaming videos. If you're doing gaming videos, you're gonna want your gameplay to be much more fluid and you're not going to want to put out 30 FPS gameplay because it just kind of looks like shit. And I have some examples. The 30 FPS clip is just kind of like motion blurry and, and just looks a little like rough. But the 60 FPS version is buttery smooth and it's just so much nicer to watch. Same thing here, looking around. You can kind of tell that there's like a little bit of a frame lag, which is weird. But the 60 FPS, absolutely not. Super buttery smooth and that's what you're going to want. Now, YouTube, you can't upload anything higher than 60 FPS, so it's pointless to do something in 120 or anything higher than 60, especially if it's gonna go to YouTube because YouTube doesn't even allow it in the first place. So when in doubt, refer to these sequence settings. I'm gonna open them back up for you again, just so you can have it. If you didn't take a screenshot or anything, write them down. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you have any additional questions, please write them in the comments section below. You can also follow me on social media at Naughty and Sands on Twitter and Instagram. You can ask me questions there. I try to respond to everybody, I truly do. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. We do them weekly here at Learn How to Edit Stuff. You know where to find us. Next week's video, super exciting. A lot of you have been asking me about what computer I use and what editing rig I use, and that has recently changed. So make sure you tune in to next week's video. I'm out of here for now. Have a good week.